everyone, welcome to Studio Sunday. Wow, what a week. Yes. <laughs> hey, what have we been doing hey, this week? Hey, if you haven't heard, we launched our very first Kickstarter on Wednesday. Yeah. I actually pushed the button to make it happen because Terry panicked and couldn't find the button. <laughs> <laughs> it's like launching a silo. It's a big deal. <laughs> anyway, we just can't thank everyone enough that has backed it. It has just been unbelievable. And you can yes. continue to back it until March 3rd. So um, take Unsolved. a look on Kickstarter, Terry Moore After Dark. After Dark. And it contains gorgeous sketches, past covers, lots of commentary, uh, some, some comparison between penciled pieces and inked pieces. Process. Um, and some original poetry. Yes. So that's exciting. And because all of you guys have been so generous already, it will have beautiful upgraded paper and a ribbon bookmark in the hard covers. They can't do one in the soft covers. And spot gloss on all three different covers. So that'll be fun. Nice. Uh, we still have some stretch goals to go, and I think the next one is a gorgeous print drawn by our friend Frank Cho. Hmm. It's such a fun piece, so check it out uh, at Kickstarter. I think we're about 5,000 from that stretch goal. So come on, we can get there. Come on. Get that print. People are going to be really happy to get a copy of Frank's print in their order because it is beautiful. And in the meantime, Terry has a lot of drawing to do. Mm, there's that. <laughs> That'll keep you out of trouble. There's that. Um, and I also want to send out a special thank you to Pat Shand, who has helped us get this Kickstarter off the ground. He is a lifesaver for sure. He walked me through the whole process, held my hand. I panicked the night before. He changed a bunch of stuff. <laughs> uh, so uh, thank you, thank you, thank you, Pat. And he also has an active Kickstarter campaign going on right now called Cerulean Dreams Number 1. So go over there and show him some love. Um, and I think his runs for a, a, another couple of weeks. So check that out for sure. Absolutely. Okay, now on to real life. Hmm. Parker Girls number five will be in stores on February 15th. I think last week we said it was going to be this coming Wednesday the 8th, mm -hmm. but it will not be due to um, all the bad weather in the U.S. The trucks just couldn't get the books where they needed to be in time. Yeah. So it kind of derailed uh, the situation for this week, but it'll be in stores on February 15th. So check isn't, it out then. I think Isn't it kind of old school and cool that these physical books can have a physical trucking problem. Yeah. Just, just I don't like think it's cool. <laughs> it is old school. It's just fun. I mean, it's, it's fun that it's there's still fun. things like it. Well, it's not fun for the publisher, but, you know, when you're used to getting things at the press of a, a key, to get a real object, a real book, still means somebody has to carry it to you in the state you live in. That's true. And that's cool. Anyway, so the 15th it is for that book. The first trade, which is Parker Girls Did Quiet, is at the printer, and it will be available in March. I'll have a street date as we get a bit closer once they get to, um, there's a mosquito in here. Oh, you're easily distracted. <laughs> it was just, <laughs> sorry. Squirrel! <laughs> anyway, as we get closer to the, the publishing date, I'll I'll know more from the printer as they move along. Okay. And that's it. That's all I have today. The Kickstarter has ruled my life. So um, and that's now what it's, I've been doing. Now it's sell like a big yeah. ship. Yeah. And so get the word out, guys. Yeah, we, wanna, we want to uh, get all of the stretch goals met and mm -hmm. uh, get these beautiful books to you. So, Cannot wait. Yes, it's great. Do you have anything to add, Mr. Moore? I, am, I would like to add that I am very grateful to you for all your hard work. And I think that, and I'm pretty sure. To people, me? Yes, to you. Thank you, Robin. And thank you, Pat. But thank you, Robin. I, I sit here and see what she does. And it's amazing how much work has gone into this. And uh, I, I think your fans know how hard you work on this stuff to make this happen. I think they understand that I do nothing <laughs> to make this possible. All I... All I do is this, and the, everything else is Robin, so... I think it's a team effort. How about that? Okay. Thank you, though. It is my pleasure, for sure. Okay, so if that's it, let's get on the hot seat. Okay. I only have one question today. Good. And it's kind of a, an interesting question. 
How do you handle plot changes in your story? Do you slowly change your story through a couple of issues? Or do you just take a right turn right away? Can you give us an example of when you change the plot in one of your series? Interesting. That's a good question. Yeah. Well, by plot change, I, I assume you mean we thought we had a story, dove in, and then now... Oh, don't say we. We. <laughs> you know, don't you and say me. we. Uh, you think I have a story, and then I dive in, and then I think of a better idea. And um, now what do I do that I've kind of set things in motion? Um, the be Obviously, the better idea has to play stand on the shoulders of what you've started. So... If I suddenly decide that this thing over here imploded, we have to have at least already introduced it or something. It has to fit into the story or make sense. Um, otherwise, that's not that good of an idea. If I just suddenly decide, hey, we're going to do a story about baseball, I'll, and then the moon blows up, well, they're not related unless I made that happen somehow. So, um, yeah, it has, to be, it has to be an organic change. So you're, you're launching off what you've already started. Um, can I think of an idea that where I did it? The only one that comes to mind for me is the one in Strangers in Paradise when you were going to end the series. And like in issue 73 or something like that. I don't, and I, you handed it to me to read and I said, what the hell? <laughs> And we talked about it, and you decided, no, you wouldn't end it. And you had to kind of backpedal. You need to look that up. Do you remember what I'm talking about? I do remember what you're talking about. And it was when Francine was uh, thinking about her options in life. And I was, we were at a point where we were really talking all the time about when do we end this? When do we end this? And... Um, I said, well, you know, I, I've laid out all these options. I can go in any direction now. And you said, but you have all these loose threads. What about this, 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 and this, and this? And I thought... And so you went three years longer. <laughs> I went three years longer and fixed this, 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 and this. And, um, and we did that. You know, the, the discussion about ending it wasn't so much because I was running out of creative juice. It was more of a business thing. So it was difficult to balance the creative and the business. I remember that part. I, and I was, and I, I wanted to keep my creative story good because that's the only thing anybody will remember in the, after it's all said and done. Nobody remembers what your business trouble was. So that's, that was a tricky spot. That's a good publishing discussion someday at a panel. For you. <laughs> no, you're there. <laughs> if it's publishing, it's you. Otherwise, I'll tell stories. Yeah, you would. <laughs> okay, well, have you ever done that with a character? You kind of did that with Casey. Uh, Casey. She was a bimbo, mm -hmm. and then she became mm -hmm. like one of the most beloved characters in Strangers in Paradise. Francine, in the beginning of the series, Francine was uh, always yelling at Freddie about... Spoilers. <laughs> I, I'm afraid you're going to dump me for some athletic girl, you know, who's a bimbo, a gym rat bimbo or something. And he did. ultimately did. <laughs> and so I just needed her to be that in the beginning. And then uh, she was just so effervescent and such a cool person. The more I was drawing her and thinking about her, the more I realized, you know, she's just because she's lively and happy and not quite in the same in sync with Francine Kachu doesn't mean she's not just as cool as they are. She's just different. And um, so I began to show more and more of her personality, that she had a different kind of smart and intelligent, and she was just as much a fighter as they were in her own way. And she became a super valid third person in their little circle of trust. Um, and that developed on its own. So... She changed on me. And that's why she started with those, you know, those radio bangs, which are... Um, mall bangs. Mall bangs. To you people know, not from Texas. Not from Texas. <laughs> you know, the, put the, the thing in your hair and get them up. That's, you know, yeah. Okay. Well, I hope that answers the questions. And look up that issue where things could go either way and people can see how you 
made that leap to get back on board. Yeah, so. you, you know, you you look over the ed, you look over the edge. Yeah, and, then, and it's scary. And on you there. think, not yet. <laughs> Okay, well, that's it for me. I'm going outside. We have had really crummy weather this past week like everyone else has, but it is 72 here today, and I want to soak up every minute of that. The windows are open. It's going to be great. Beautiful. Monday, winter is back, so we're going to take advantage. Man. So what are you drawing today? Um, I thought I would talk about something really useful, uh, which is uh, for the artists out there, how do you take a sketch that you've done and move it into a, the high, the next up category of a little more expensive sketch. Um, what is the difference between that sketch and that sketch? Why is why is one fifty dollars more than the other? And uh, I'm going to take a sketch and bump it up a notch and uh, show you how I do it and what what people look for. There's been a lot of times where I've stood at the table watching potential uh, buyer look at a drawing and I see what they're looking at. And, and then I see what they choose, and I'll show you what the difference is. So meet me here. So I drew this sketch a couple of days ago, and I thought it would be a good ex um, drawing to work with to show you how to take a sketch to the next level. Because um, I, I, th I like this, I like the drawing, and it would be fine as it is, but if I added details to it and clean it up um, and get the drawing more precise, it would actually take it up another notch and we would price it a little higher than normal. So I thought I would show you that. Uh, one of the first most obvious things to do is I had just a gray tone on the hood Say this is Lilith as Red Riding Hood or the Wicked Witch um, in Fables. So, there. Um, I see all kinds of things to do. Um, but I thought, well, add a pattern to this garment. And because everything in the their world is organic and they live in the forest, the natural thing to do is to put on one of those prints of ivy. So I'm do, I've done that, pretty much finished here. I'm just gonna do it to the top coat. I, the gloves can be black leather, so we can do a leather tone on that. But one of the things, go into the face here, see how the, from the distance it looks fine, but if you get up close, the details are rough, still rough. The eyebrows are not filled in. That's a sketch, quick sketch eyebrow. Kind of the same over here. If those were really on your face, you would do some work on them. <laughs> Put it that way. Um, the eye is kind of flat toned. It's all flat across, and there is no ir um, iris in the middle. So adding that will do a lot to bring the eye into a more 3D looking eye. Um, see how it's dirty back in there. And the eyelash is uh, rough, roughed in, but not precise. And kind of the same thing on the mouth. There's a stray line. There's lacking tone right there. These kind of things would actually help. It needs to be cleaned up. When you get to the hair, there's only really only two tones, a medium and a light. There's not a third tone. And if you add a third tone in there, like in here in the back section, like that, it suddenly, see how that looks a little more 3D? Do that all in here for the things that are in the back, underneath on the bottom layer, and it will really pop out the top layer. So, adding contrast to the hair. Um, this hood is not, is not an attractive shape. You could get off this corner here, come out here a little wider, come over there. It's gonna be a lot prettier. Um, the same thing, There's you could add one more dark tone and it would pop the whole apple out as more 3D. Right now it's just a two-tone, light and medium. Um, and make the glove be either like a white leather or a white satin. And that's done by adding these shadows in here like that for pattern and then getting 
an eraser and getting highlights all up in there. And that's how you get that satin cotton look. Um, these are things that I'm noticing and I would do. Um, get in here to the hair and clean it and make it much prettier. Um, that looks too... Uh, it doesn't look free. That, that looks like it... That doesn't have this loose, uh, free nature feel to it. That can be done by uh, increasing the S shape and getting it to flip a little uh, with a little more flare. <laughs> uh, get a, some flipping flare in there. And uh, see how the strings are sloppy? Uh, just rough drawn in here, rough sketched. Get precise about that. And um, I would actually pull the, the string, erase that one, and get it to come over here and lead you right down into the cleavage, which was the purpose of it all is to get you to, obviously the whole purpose of the drawing is to look. And this will help lead the eye, the hair, and the string. And then when you get down in here, See how this is roughed in? I can go in there and make that precise and make it look like this really is uh, leather straps that are cinched and the fabric is pulled in to come closer like that. You know, those kind of things that you do. Same over here to get the fabric to look like it's pulled in. And there's also a lack of symmetry between where the lacing is and where the middle of the chest is. So that needs to be aligned. So this actually needs to be pulled over to there. Um, and just, you know, what happens down at the very bottom of the page matters. If it goes into here, you think, what the heck is going on down there off the, off the paper? And it can change, make the whole drawing look wacky. So at least when you do your... Um, your fade off lines, at least point them in the right direction, right? It matters. So this one wasn't doing its job. It needs to come back out like that because this is the waist and this needs to come over here and then go out. And suddenly you know, oh, okay, there's a figure here. There's a waist. There's going to be hips. You know, you're, you stop worrying about it. This is what the hell's going on here? We have an arm and then we have nothing implying an elbow except that I made some loose lines here for um, um, cotton that was being squeezed. So it needs to have a better definition of what is going on with the elbow joint and the arm, the arm going down into there. So those are the things I'm going to go after. <laughs> if I do those little details, I switch this from, say, a uh, $100 sketch to more you know because then it will it won't be it won't look like i spent this looks like i spent 45 minutes on a sketch or an hour on a sketch and then when i do these details it'll be a two hour sketch two hour drawing and it's going to be a lot more polished it's not all about you know getting here and doing endless tones of gradients and tones and smooth shading it's not about that it's about getting the drawing to be correct, and it's about giving all those little details. And the little details, like all the way from the eyebrow to the string to uh, the hair being 3D, that's gonna make so much difference when you look at the final drawing. Okay, so burn this into your brain, and I'll do the work, and then come back and show you um, what we got. Okay, there it is. Um, I tried to do everything I said that I noticed. Um, the face has the contrast, the hair. I widened out the hood so it looks more realistic. Um, the pattern is everywhere and I put highlights on the robe. 
I uh, fixed the uh, ties instead of doing just a sloppy approximation. I really did it. <laughs> and the same thing with these ties down here. And then I got serious about the symmetry in here because um, it was wacko. And then I kind of gave her uh, some sort of satin uh, wicked glove here, you know. Um, did a little bit of toning on the apple. Uh, dressed the elbow a little bit. It's still kind of a mess down there, but it's in the corner. <laughs> um, I don't know. And insinuated, oh, it, there's more. It keeps going <laughs> with, you know, the lines. So that's it. That's how I upgraded this sketch. Oh, and the eyes. Always the eyes. That's how I just uh, sent this sketch from a $10 sketch to a $15 sketch. Yes. Buyer beware. <laughs> uh, that's how, that's what you look for when you're upgrading your sketches for the shows and, and online. So hope this helps. See you next week.